chair. Ugh. Hand line today, fellas. Hand line. All these flies. I'm incredibly embarrassed at how gaudy my flies have become. It's just time to simplify, you know? See, back in my music days, uh, I've had many uh, philosophical discussions with my old professors like uh, Jonathan Knopfsinger, Dr. Dr. Knopfsinger, yeah. For instance, when Miles Davis recorded the Kind of Blue album, arguably the greatest jazz album ever recorded, maybe My Funny Valentine was maybe the best, but how did Miles know that how much blue was blue enough? Fishing at its heart and its core is about food, it's about meat, it's about food. But if it's only about food, then it's nothing more than a job. I hate sniffing glue. And once you have those systems down, I can literally go out and catch all the meat that I need for about a month within about a few, couple of days. About a day, two days, maybe three, depending on how I'm catching bait or not. So then, if I only need to fish about three days a month, what are you gonna do for the rest of the month? <laughs> well, as such, fishing has become a sport for most people. They're not fishing for food, they're doing it just for the fun of it. A sport takes away the life and death situation of it, because it's all about life and death, food or starving or eating, right? Once you take that away, it's just for fun. And you're restricting yourself in how you're fishing on purpose by using artificial lures as opposed to live bait or cut bait. You refine those systems of sport fishing, which take a lot more time and a lot more effort to refine. And given enough time and developing your own methods, especially if you're designing your own lures and tying them up yourself, that becomes a craft. And if that craft is refined or for a long enough period of time, the craft becomes an art. There's only one way to know if the lures are gonna catch any fish. Got my chair, so I won't be able to stay out here too long without my back being too painted. Slinky weight, made from my nails and my um, slinky weight material, triple threat swivel, 18 inches up, Mickey fin, 18 inches up from there. We got a sort of classic olive and red streamer here, and then a blue and white streamer there. 
and all will be dipped in my super sauce, Aquatic Nutrition's Chum Slick. I use this on live bait lures and everything. Nice if I had a chest cam right here. And, oh, come on, really? I'm just gonna let that go all the way to the bottom. For the hand line, this is the second hand line I ever made. Need to, oh, not too deep right here. Yeah. And then to lock it in place, I'll put it on the ground here. I usually put it under my leg, under one leg, under a knee, and over the other leg, and that way I can feel it, even though I don't have my hands. And to see what those flies can do as the wind is sort of drifting us back and pushing us back toward the dam. They're obviously not pushing as much current. Yeah, I really like the hand line. Some people like the fly rod. I give me the hand line just about any day. 15 pound test here, way too light for my personal liking. I'd much rather have like a 20 pound test line on the hand line. As much as I love fishing, customer orders often take most of my time. While my handline reels have sold well over the past two seasons, it's unusually hard on my equipment. My lathing tools have gotten quite dull and they need to be professionally refinished, so, um,. Guess I'll just have to go fishing. First rod I'm gonna try to rig or re-rig is gonna be this bluegill rod. See if we can't catch some cut bait. I think we got some kind of front beginning to move through. It's been dead clear skies and now it's cooler and it's slightly overcast. So I'm not smelling any bluegill beds up this far. I'm smelling them closer towards the creek where I put in. Around the bend from the creek where I put in is where I'm smelling the bluegill beds. And that's that's your that's your depth finder. I mean, that's your sonar. That's your, you know, wind and the current for now are moving in the same direction, which is very encouraging. A lot of people say rig up your stuff before you go fishing, but one of my um, Afro Puffs, my favorite bluegill tipping fly right now. I'm here now trying to catch, if I can catch a couple of bluegill even. Hand line is already rigged from last time. Three flies. Oh no, I didn't. Oh crap. Oh, that fly is no good. Then just call it a day. You know? Ah, yes. Woo, sweet. Sweet. Oh, he came off. He came off. That was a nice hit, boy. 
with these little nibbles, man, I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not, I, I do have one bucket of uh, black soldier fly larvae that I'm growing. It's probably be another month before they get here, but this season has been almost nothing but tipping baits like this. I kind of wonder if you can make a dough bait like this with this dip stuff that I have and get similar results. Let's try some trolling. It's slow, man. It's bad slow. Completely free lining. I don't know, maybe 200 feet of line out now, just under the surface. up by this big rock here. See if we can get a skipjack or something this quick, quick current. We'll see. Don't do this if you don't have a motor you don't trust. Sometimes you just, you just can't catch them, you know, you can't find them, they don't bite, even though they should be. And so you, um, come back and tie more flies.